hey guys welcome back to my channel today thank you so much for stopping by in this video we'll be cutting and sewing these two pieces that you can see on your screen and we'll start by drafting out the pants it's a pleated short pants i'll go ahead and start taking my points so i'll be adding two inches band to this band so before i start placing my measurements i'll take out the two inches so if you're using one inch for your band or 1.5 inches go ahead and take the inches out before you start taking your point so the first point i'm taking is distance from my waist to my hip which is nine inches so as you can see i took out the two inches and i marked nine inches and i wrote a straight line across the next point i'll take is my crotch point to do that a video is going to be showing on the screen on how i get mine so what i did was to pass my tape through my leg okay and i placed it above my belly button and i also passed it to the back my back waist whatever i got i divided it by two and i placed it on my pattern paper there are other ways to get your crotch line so you can divide your hip circumference by four and then we'll add one inch to it okay so whichever one works for you so i took out the two inches and i placed my crotch point and i wrote the straight line across the next thing i did was to mark my tie line so i just went down by four inches from this crotch line okay and i wrote the straight line across so i've labeled my lines i have my hip line my crotch line and my tie line and the start of this pattern paper is going to be my waistline the next thing i'll do is to start placing my measurements so on the waistline i'm going to place my hip circumference divided by four plus one inch so the hip circumference i'm working with is 40 inches 40 divided by four is 10 inches 10 inches plus one inch for ease is 11 inches so i placed 11 inches on the waistline i'm placing the same 11 inches on the hip line and the same 11 inches on the crotch line after doing that i'm going to connect the three dots into a straight line so go ahead and divide your hip circumference by four and add one inch to it for ease place it on your waistline on your crotch line and on your hip line the next thing i'm going to do is to get my crotch extension line to do that i'm going to place my tape on the crotch line and whatever i have there i'm going to divide it by four so guys after dividing the 11 inches that i placed on my crotch line it gave me about two and quarter so i'll just approximate it and make it three inches so i'm placing the three inches after the straight line as you can see i'll indicate the three inches with a dot after doing that i'm going to connect from the hip point the hip line okay to meet these three inches dot as you can see so we've gotten our crotch extension line next thing i'll do is to determine how free i want my pants to be so as you can see i'm measuring on the crotch line what i have there is 14 inches which is enough for me so i'm going to mark 14 inches all the way down i forgot to mark the length of my pants so i'm going to do that now so make sure you take out your band allowance before you mark the length of your um, pants so i'm going to make the length of my pants 21 inches as you can see i'm marking 25 21 inches all the way and then i connected so the 14 inches that i have on the crotch line i'm going to place it on the pants length so you don't have to make your own pants like this okay just go ahead and divide your round tie circumference by two okay and place it then you add ease allowance i just connected from the crotch line straight down because i want this pant to be really free okay so after doing that i went ahead to cut so we don't need to shape the waist line of this pants because we are going to pleat it okay that is why we placed our hip circumference on the waistline instead of the waist circumference okay so after doing that i went ahead to fold my fabric into two and i placed my pattern paper on it okay leaving about 3.5 inches on this crotch area so i have excess fabric on the crotch area and on the waist area okay as you can see so the next thing i'll do is to extend the crotch line on this um fabric just so the crotch line is sitting together okay after doing that i'm going to extend the back crotch line by another three inches so if you extended your front crotch by two inches extend the back by two inches okay and on this flap area i also went ahead to increase it by two inches because i'll be fixing my zipper to the back okay so i'm connecting from that two inches all the way to meet the three inches um extension line okay
after connecting the crotch line i'm going to just connect straight down to the base of the pant but if you want your pant to be fit fitted especially on the base area you can just slant from that point to meet the pattern paper the waistline i'm going to go up by two inches okay from this pattern paper as you can see i'll connect from that two inches to meet the extension okay on the flap area as you can see i'll connect the lines together like this okay after doing that guys i'm going to mark what i have on my pattern paper that's on the waistline of my pattern paper and what i have there is 11 inches okay so what i'll do is to now mark 11 inches from this extension okay so pay close attention what i have here is 11 inches and as you can see i've already extended the back so the 11 inches is not going to sit together so i'm marking the 11 inches on my pattern paper as you can see so this 11 inches i'm going to slant from this extension to meet this 11 inches not a straight line but i slanted it so this is going to be our new waistline for the back so what i'll do is use my chalk to mark my hip line okay after doing that i'm going to use my ruler to connect from this new waistline to meet the hip line guys after connecting this is what i have so make sure your line is not too sharp okay if it's sharp go ahead and blend it okay so if you are conversant with my pants and trouser tutorial you know that i always do this whatever you do make sure you don't have a sharp edge on the hip area so it's easy for you to stitch so after doing that guys i am cutting so pay close attention so you know where to cut After cutting guys this is what i have i'll go ahead and remove my pattern paper so we don't need to take in our darts for this pants because we are going to be pleating the waist area so what i'll do is to pin my crotch line in place and i'll go ahead and sew okay so for this back i'm going to sew 1.5 inches at the back because i already said i'll be fixing my zipper to the back so for the front guys i've gone ahead to also fold my fabric into two and i placed my pattern paper the only thing i'll do for the front is to add one inch on this flap area which is going to serve as my stitching allowance the one inch that we added earlier is going to serve as our ease allowance okay so i'm just going to add one inch all the way as you can see me doing and i'll connect it back to the crotch line after doing that i'm going to cut it out exactly as it is After cutting guys this is what i have i'll go ahead and remove my pattern paper and i'll pin the crotch in place okay so i'm going to sew using my one inch allowance that i left so that is um that's for the pan tutorial we're going to go ahead and draft out the top okay so to do that i'm going to be drafting on my pattern paper first of all so i went ahead to roll out all my lines to save time so i'll quickly run you guys through all the points that i have here the first line here is my round arm o measurement okay which is um my chest line measurement okay like we always do the next point is my bust point which is 10 inches next point is my waistline which is 16 inches while the last point is the length of the length of my top which is 20 inches on this shoulder line i took half of my shoulder measurement divided by two i came down on that point by one inch for my shoulder slope the same measurement that i have on the shoulder line i placed it on this chest line okay what i have is eight inches and i connected the two dots into a straight line okay these are regular bodies okay the next thing i'm going to do is to place my bust circumference divided by four on this chest line i will indicate the um, measurement on the chest line as you can see after doing that i'll connect my arm o 
like this to meet the point that i have on the chest line after doing that guys i'll go ahead and start placing my measurements I already have my bust circumference divided by 4 on the chest line. On the waistline, I'll place my waist circumference divided by 4. On the top length, I'm going to place my hip circumference divided by 4, okay? And I'm going to connect the three dots together. So I'm placing my hip circumference divided by 4 on the blouse line because this blouse does not have a zipper. So it's going to be free on the base, okay? So after connecting, I'm going to blend this sharp edge on the waist area. After doing that, I'm going to add my allowance, okay? So since the blouse does not have a zipper, go ahead and add one inch for stitching allowance and another one inch for ease, okay? Go ahead and do that. After doing that, also connect the dots together. After doing that, guys, next thing I'm going to do is to mark my neckline measurement. So, we'll be using this pattern for both the front and the back. So, I'll first of all, take the back neckline, okay? So, for the depth, I'll be using um, 1.5 inches and for the width, I'll be using 3.5 inches, okay? So, I'm marking 3.5 inches as you can see and for the depth, I'll go down by 1.5 inches and I'm going to connect like this. After connecting, guys, that is all. I'm going to go ahead and cut. So guys, after cutting, I'll be using this pattern to cut out the back first. So I went ahead to fold my fabric into two, making sure that my center back is on fold. Okay, and I left excess fabric on the upper part. Um, the fabric I have here is about 9 inches. I think you should make yours longer. So because I want to cut out my facing with the main fabric, I went ahead to fold it inward like this, okay? After folding, I'll go ahead and trim off my neckline, the shoulder area, and the arm area. So once I open it up, I have both my facing and my main fabric, okay? So after doing that, I'm going to open it up for you guys to see. So as you can see, the center back is on fold, okay? And I also have my facing underneath it. But if you don't have enough fabric to cut out your facing, you can go ahead and pipe your neckline using your bias or you can aim the neckline depending on what you want okay so this is what my facing looks like okay you can see that it's not wide enough on the arm or area that's why i said i should have increased it so if you have enough fabric go ahead and make it like 10 inches or 11 inches long okay so after doing that i'll pin them right sides facing right side as you can see so guys for the front i want to use the slash and spread method so what I'll do is to slash through my chest line, which is the first line that we have on this pattern paper. I'll just slash through it, but I'm not going to cut it out completely. So I'm just going to spread these parts like this. So what I'll do is to fold my fabric into two, and I'm going to go ahead and pin this pattern paper. So I'm pinning the center front, as you can see. I'm pinning it down, and your center front should be on fold, okay? I'll just use my pin to hold this part down. And I'll hold the other part down like this. After doing that, guys, I'm going to spread this upper part, okay? So, note that the wider you spread it, the more the neckline is going to fall, okay? So, you're going to determine how wide you want the neckline to be, okay? So, I left excess fabric also on this one because I want to cut out my facing with the main fabric, okay? So, what I'll do is to spread... As you can see, what I have here is about 15 inches. I decided to bring it forward a bit. So when you are spreading your pattern paper on your fabric, you are going to ignore the neckline, okay? You are starting from the shoulder because we are not going to cut out this neckline as it is. The neckline is for the back, okay? So when measuring what you are spreading, measure from the shoulder area, okay? So after spreading, I went ahead to just pin it down, okay? And I'm going to connect from this shoulder as you can see.
in a straight line from the shoulder i'm ignoring the neckline to the center front like this so that is how i'm going to cut when i'm cutting okay so the neckline is not included the neckline was just for the back okay after connecting like this guys this is what i have so when i'm cutting i'm just cutting the shoulders the arm or and the side so i left excess fabric here too because i want to use this as facing and i want it to cover my nipple so the length of this excess fabric is about 11 inches or 12 inches so i went ahead to fold it inward just like i did for the front okay so i'm going to go ahead and start cutting for my shoulders first of all okay so i'll cut out the shoulders i'll cut out the arm or i'll also cut out the sides okay so guys after cutting i'll go ahead and notch the shoulder because i want to know the shoulder point okay so i'll notch it after doing that i'm going to remove my pattern paper okay so guys because of the way i folded my fabric i'm going to split the facing and the main fabric so i decided to fold my fabric for the facing this way because i don't want to confuse you guys i wanted to do it in a way that you guys will understand if not i would have folded my facing inside that way i won't have to split the facing and the main fabric but now that my fabric is folded this way i have to open it up like this okay so i'm going to cut to meet that notch that i have on the shoulder okay after cutting i'm going to open it up for you guys to see so i have the main bodies which is this and you can see the cow neckline effect already so i'll just go ahead and arrange my fabric and the facing in place like this okay? So I'll place the facing and the main fabric right sides facing right sides and I'll go ahead and pin all the way around okay. So guys that is all for the pattern drafting of this tutorial. Stay tuned for the sewing fashion. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video. Leave your questions in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next one.